Looking to join the mighty Astra Militarum, but don't know where to start? Here's what you need to know. With the recent new Astra Militarum army releases, upcoming codex, and Dark Tide video game, there's never been a better time to join the Imperial Guard. The Astra Militarum, also known as the Imperial Guard, is one of the most diverse factions in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, with hundreds of thousands of regiments with unique characteristics from hundreds of thousands of different worlds. There's something special about just being a man with a las gun facing down cosmic horrors beyond comprehension with nothing but the indomitable human spirit. Although such tremendous diversity exists in lore, most of Games Workshop's introductory packages, such as their Start Collecting and Cadia Stan's Army Box, are centered around one planet's prolific soldiers, the Cadian Shock Troops. Made famous for their stand against Abaddon's Black Crusades against Cadia, Cadians are the face of the Astra Militarum as a whole. Their distinctive flak armor has become standard for Astra Militarum regiments across the galaxy, meaning that these simple models can represent soldiers from thousands of different worlds. Models for other regiments are offered by Games Workshop, however. The Death Corps of Krieg recently received a brand new kill team with some great plastic sculpts. The Katachan Jungle Fighters, on the other hand, while being one of the most popular sub-factions in the Astra Militarum, only have a small few character models and old infantry sculpts that have aged very poorly. Other regiments that were once popular among Imperial Guard players, such as the Armageddon Steel Legion, Vostroyan Firstborn, Valhalla Ice Warriors, and Talarn Desert Raiders only had metal miniatures that have been phased out entirely, though these sculpts can sometimes be found on the second-hand market. These famed regiments will hopefully be making a return to the range sometime soon, but for now, the only real option is to use the Cadian-style infantry models. The great thing about the Astra Militarum, however, is that the vehicles, which we'll get into later, can for the most part be used across all sub-factions or regiments, and a paint job is all that's needed to signify which regiment you want to represent on the tabletop. Now, Warhammer 40k can be a very expensive hobby, so it's important you spend your hard-earned money on things you'll actually use. I would recommend first buying the Astra Militarum Codex, a book that contains information about the Astra Militarum in lore, a list of different characters, troops, vehicles, and the unique attributes, and the rules needed to use them on the tabletop. At the time of this video, the new 9th edition codex with updated rules and points values hasn't been released for individual sale quite yet, but that should be coming out in the upcoming weeks. You can wait for the new codex to be released, or buy the currently available 8th edition codex. Personally, I think the true value of a codex is in the descriptions of the army and units themselves, rather than the individual rules. Regardless of how competitive a single unit is, you'll only really be successful in building an army if you're actually interested in what you're putting in it. Points values and specific rules can generally be found online at Wahabedia. What's important is to read the codex, find out what units you're personally interested in, and then build your army around these models. If you build an army around what's competitive and not actually what you want to build, you'll be out of luck in a few months when a new balance update comes out and you have an underperforming and uninteresting army. In my case, I wanted to build a mechanized infantry army. I was inspired by the regimental organization charts in the Codex and selected my units to make my army as close as possible to a self-contained force with scout, mechanized infantry, and fire support units. Begin with the end in mind before you start buying models so that you're constantly working towards a cohesive army from the very beginning. This isn't to say you should completely restrict yourself to a single plan from the beginning. You can change your initial plan as you gain more knowledge along the way. Now, let's talk about actually buying your first models. Currently, there are two beginner-oriented box sets available for purchase through Games Workshop that offer some pretty decent discounts compared to buying the miniatures separately. First, the new Cadia Stands Army Box, which includes the new Codex along with two Cadian Shock Troop Squads, a Sentinel, Command Squad, and Field Ordnance Battery for $200. All of these models are brand new sculpts that you can't get anywhere else as of right now, though they will be available for purchase separately in the coming weeks. This is a great way to start an army, as you'll have an HQ unit, a Company Commander, Elite unit, Command Squad, two Troop units, Cadian Shock Troops, a Fast Attack unit, Sentinel, and Heavy Support unit, the Field Ordnance Battery. This box gives you approximately 400 points worth of models on the tabletop, so you'll need to augment this with a few more units to have a combat patrol ready force at 500 points. The second option is the classic start collecting box that's been around for a few years now. This box coming in at around $80 
was what initially got me interested in the Astra Militarum, containing an HQ unit, Lord Commissar, troop unit, Cadian shock troops, and heavy support unit, a Lehman Ross battle tank. This box is being discontinued by Games Workshop, as it contains the older Cadian shock troop infantry models, but can often be found at a variety of other online retailers, often for discounted prices. This box will only get you around 300 points, depending on how you run the included Lehman Ross, but is a great way to get your feet wet with some useful Astra Militarum units right from the beginning. Regardless of what happens with balance updates, the Infantry Squad and Lehman Ross will almost always be a good inclusion in an Astra Militarum army. Regardless of what you choose, or if you prefer to build your army as a conglomerate of separate kits, you'll first want to focus on some infantry. Because of how the detachment army organization system functions in Warhammer 40k, you'll generally need to include some troop type units in your army. It's worth noting that the new Arcs of Omen detachment makes troops slightly less essential, but they still form the backbone of most forces. In an Astra Militarum army, 99% of the time these units will be your standard infantry squads of 10 men. Painting these can be a slog, but there's a great amount of tutorials online that can make doing so much easier. I personally use Sonic Sledgehammer Studios' excellent painting tutorial for my four squads of infantry and command squad that saves a lot of time by priming the models using Xandri Dust, the same color as their fatigues. In the Astra Militarum, firepower is king. With the exception of Bulgrin and Ogrin, tanky giants that fill an elite's detachment slot that can be brutally effective in melee, Astra Militarum armies win by destroying the enemy at range with overwhelming firepower. This can come in many forms. The most popular way to get firepower on the table while minimizing points cost is through Lehman Ross battle tanks, which have many variants designed for different battlefield roles, whether that's providing anti-tank fire, shredding hordes of enemy infantry, or destroying hostiles in cover. The Lehman Ross tank commander is an especially important Lehman Ross variant, as it is capable of issuing orders to friendly units, or to itself, that can maximize movement, firepower, and other critical battlefield activities. Tank commanders also fill an HQ detachment slot. The Bane Blade and its numerous variants, Bane Blade, Bane Hammer, Storm Sword, Shadow Sword, Bane Sword, Doom Hammer, Storm Lord, and Hell Hammer, are larger, tougher tanks with more firepower, though they don't see as much use as they aren't usually as economically viable, costing as much as multiple Lehman Russes. The Rogel Dorn battle tank hasn't been released yet, but essentially will provide a middle ground between the Lehman Russ and the Bane Blade in terms of armor and firepower. The second way to add firepower to an Astra Militarum army is through indirect fire support, generally through either the Basilisk Artillery Tank, Manticore Rocket Launcher, or Wyvern Suppression Tank. When used in conjunction with support tank ace traits, which can buff a unit's damage or accuracy, these vehicles can be deadly, taking out your enemy's strongest units from a safe position. The Basilisk is the main artillery vehicle of the Imperial Guard. Basilisks can provide indirect fire support for frontline troops from miles behind the front line, but can also level their gun barrels and shoot directly at enemy troop formations, vehicles, or fortifications. I personally included two of them in my 1000 point Astra Militarum army because of their extreme firepower. Also, they just look cool. Manticore self-propelled rocket launchers pose a unique threat among the vehicles of the Imperial Guard, foregoing thick armor or overwhelming firepower for pinpoint accuracy and lethality, capable of crippling the enemy's most important units before they have time to impact the battlefield situation. For most of 9th edition, they've been the favored fire support choice for Astra Militarum players, but they've been hit with some recent points cost increases to bring them in line with other options. Wyvern suppression tanks are capable of eliminating huge hordes of enemy infantry, but their low armor penetration makes them more of a niche unit, typically only included in specialized armies or larger forces. For more information about any of these vehicles, make sure to check out my In Lore and on the Tabletop series, where I break down the battlefield role, strengths, weaknesses, and playstyle of almost every vehicle in the Astra Militarum arsenal. Now, this covers the core of most armies, guardsmen and tanks. If you've been around my channel long enough, however, you'll know that I take a slightly different approach. It's not really based on competitiveness, but I think it's pretty cool, and it takes a more realistic approach to modern army organization. There are three main dedicated transport options for the Astra Militarum. 
the Chimera Armored Personal Carrier, the Tarox Troop Transport, and the Valkyrie Aerial Transport. The Chimera is by far the most commonly used. I currently have four of them in my army, one for each infantry squad. Chimeras can carry up to 12 infantry models each and pack some firepower to boot, allowing you to transport your infantry squads to objectives while keeping them safe. They're also fairly strong in the current meta. Taroxes perform a similar role but have slightly higher mobility and less firepower. Valkyries are a completely different animal, providing extremely rapid aerial transport and some heavy firepower at a steep cost premium. Again, I have videos on every single one of these vehicles, so be sure to check them out. Again, because of the detachment system that regulates army building, you'll need to include some HQ unit types in your army. Unlike some armies, where commanders tend to be tough, brutal melee units, Astra Militarum HQ units are typically fairly fragile and excel in issuing orders to make their troops more effective in battle. The most popular HQ units are company commanders, a single fragile human character whose only real impact is issuing orders to infantry, and tank commanders, which are Lehman Razas with similar leadership characteristics with regard to other tank units. These orders, as mentioned before with regard to tank commanders, can buff a certain unit's ability to wage war, being firepower upgrade or movement upgrade or similar. That concludes the real essential elements of an Astra Militarum army, but there are some other interesting units that can aid your forces in different ways. First are the Armored and Scout Sentinels, cheap, relatively tough units that advance in front of your main army to grab objectives or harass the enemy vanguard while your heavy guns deal killing blows from the rear. Second is the Hellhound, a flamethrower tank with the capability to either deal brutal damage to your enemy at close range or blow up in a massive fireball and destroy your own battle line. High upside, but high risk, making the game a lot more fun in the process. The Death Strike Missile Launcher is essentially an area denial tactical nuke. It struggled with weak rules in 9th edition so far, but looks to be more effective in the new codex. The Hydra anti-aircraft tank also provides a valuable anti-flyer punch that can also cut apart enemy infantry formations. To make your Astra Militarum forces more effective, you can also add elite Tempestus Scion Special Forces units, capable of deep striking behind enemy lines to deal heavy damage to enemy vehicles and infantry with Melta guns and hotshot las guns. There really is no wrong way to build an Astra Militarum army as long as you're choosing what you're going to want to build, paint, and use. Creating a thematic or visually interesting army is incredibly satisfying once it's arrayed in a line of battle on the tabletop. Make sure to check out the other videos on this channel to get more info about Astra Militarum vehicles or army building ideas, and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Until next time, Cadia stands.